Preparation for the Consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus The Fourth Day The Proper Acts of this Devotion The First Act Love The Sacred Heart of Jesus merits our love because He loved us first. He loved us as God from eternity with an infinite love and loved us as man. As Pius XII said, Therefore, the heart of Jesus Christ hypostatically united to the Divine Person of the Word certainly beats with love and with the other emotions. But these, joined to a human will full of divine charity and to the infinite love itself which the Son shares with the Father and the Holy Spirit, were in such complete unity and agreement that never among these three loves was there any contradiction of or disharmony. Jesus not only loved humanity in a general way, but on the contrary, he particularly loved every single man, every act of his life, every sacrifice and privation during his hidden life. Every word of his preaching and every pain in his passion was entirely offered for my soul out of his immense love. He loved me as if I alone existed in the world. Christ's eternal and infinite love has never fallen short. He proves this by leaving himself in the consecrated host. I will be with you until the end of time. Matthew chapter 28 verse 20 in every Holy Mass, He continues to shower the fruits of His Passion and Cross upon us, and will continue to do so until the end of time. The Sacred Heart of Jesus elevates this excessive love by giving Himself to us, not only as Savior, but also as bread and nourishment of our souls. The Second Act, Reparation A principal and vital part of this consecration is that the Creator's love responds to the creature's love thus resulting in yet another obligation, which is to compensate in some way for the transgressions committed against the uncreated love. This obligation is called reparation. We can ask ourselves, how important is it to repair if Christ has already done so for the sins of the entire world? The surrender of Christ is perfectly meritorious, but we must remember that we are the body of Christ, and as such, we must enter into his sacrifice. If we do not repair with Christ, we are not part of His body. Therefore, our ablation and sacrifice must be to immolate our self-love, our desires, and to crucify our flesh with the mystical crucifixion. Reparation is an obligation of love. We must correspond to the great love of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, we will be more holy in the measure in which our acts of love are more intense, actual, and universal. Christ wanted to reveal his heart to us with the signs of his passion and casting flames of charity out of itself. That, seeing the infinite malice of sin and admiring the Redeemer's infinite charity, we might hate sin more fervidly and more ardently respond to his charity. Let us never forget that the whole force of atonement depends solely on Christ's bloody sacrifice, which was renewed uninterruptedly on our altars without bloodshed. Therefore, our immolation must be united with his Eucharistic sacrifice, so that we may also be offered as living, holy, pleasing hosts to God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God to meditate upon these truths. We ask the grace to be able to repair the insults with which the Sacred Heart is wounded by men everywhere. Today's resolution. Let's think of someone who lives far away from God and offer a Hail Mary for that person. Ejaculatory prayer of the day to be repeated throughout the day. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask forgiveness for those who do not believe, who do not worship, who do not hope, and who do not love you.